Yes, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Apologies, this is a little bit later than everybody expected this one to be. Uh, as you can see, I am not in my normal location. I am in Brecon, and I'm um, trying to do the fan dance today. Um, I had some meetings yesterday, which overran. Um, so rather than cancel it altogether, I just thought I would do it this morning. Hopefully the quality is good enough. Um, obviously, it's the first time going live in here. It's not my regular internet, so I'm hoping it works. I'm using my phone. Um, so there's a good chance that the phone at some point just wigs out because it is on an electronic gimbal. So it is what it is. We may, we make do. Um, hopefully the audio is pretty good as well. It is a little bit echoey in here. Um, lovely little place, though, isn't it? Anyway, so let's talk about Kobe Mainu. So Gareth Southgate showing his true colours and the, the, the shittest set of balls the world has ever seen by eventually calling Kobe Mainu up to the England squad on the back of literally somebody else saying something it feels like, doesn't it? It feels like Ian Wright went, hey, do you know what? How's Kobe Mainu not in the England squad? And, um, and Gareth Southgate seemingly went, wow, you're right, yeah. So the news is Kobe mainu has been brought into the England squad for the friendlies against Brazil and Belgium. If I'm a betting man, I think he plays no minutes because Gareth Southgate loves to bring up someone and then play everybody that he already knows everything about anyway. Um, he had been earmarked for the 21s, um, but it looks like his performance against Liverpool um, earned a rethink from Gareth Southgate. Um, and that's it, really, isn't it? Um, lots of people are saying, oh, keep him away from Gareth Southgate. Well, I don't necessarily think Gareth Southgate's a bad influence. I just don't think he's a good manager. I don't like what he stands for as a manager. I don't like how he says, this is my selection criteria and then goes back and changes his, his opinion on that, or seemingly goes out of his way to prove every single thing that he said. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, how is the audio? Oh, the video's a little bit choppy, yeah. Well, at the bottom here, for anyone who, who knows OBS, it's saying it's dropping 30% of the frames. I don't know what to do about that, unfortunately. Um, I did some test records and it looked okay. Maybe it just can't handle streaming it as well as uh, as well as posting it. But get your comments in. What are you lot saying? Richard says, morning, Steve. Still buzzing about Sunday. Great to see Mr. Ready Salty Chris has gone for a bit of spice in calling up Mainu. He's still got to play him. And I, I think that's the bit where this all falls down, to be honest with you. Um, Thomas says, Mainu 6, Bellingham 8, um, Foden 10. Imagine that. Not a chance that happens. Um, but... I think Rice as a six, Mainu as an eight, Bellingham as a ten. I think that's plausible. Um, I understand he will want to throw Foden in, but I think Foden's Foden's a, a, a wonderfully talented player, very very gifted footballer. But he's in that awkward spot of sometimes not every team wants to play with a ten. And if you play Bellingham as a, a ten, you don't really get a ten. You get an attacking eight. So if you have Bellingham and Mainu as your eights, they're both going to cover ground. Bellingham's going to operate higher up the pitch than Mainu does. But you're going to get that work rate out of them. Not to say Foden doesn't work hard, but I think he's almost an exclusively final third kind of player. Um, and I don't think he's got the physicality to be an effective defender either, which I think is something that England are going to require. Um, Mohamed Ol says, uh, Gareth Southgate to United, we've got to stop that, even the rumour. Right, I'd heard a few times from really, really reliable people as well that Southgate is genuinely on United's list. And I know that's not news to you at the moment because everybody is saying that. Well, the reason everyone's saying that is because it is true. It is actually true. Gareth Southgate is on Manchester United's radar in terms of a new boss. Half of me is hoping, and it is hope because I've got no evidence about this whatsoever. Half of me is hoping that, do you know what? Maybe they're throwing all of this Southgate propaganda out so when they eventually keep Ten Hag, everyone goes, oh, thank God. Maybe it's a little bit of pro Ten Hag propaganda disguised as negative Gareth Southgate propaganda. Or maybe I read too many books and I'm thinking that someone's playing 4D chess when actually they're not and they just genuinely like Gareth Southgate. It could be both, couldn't it, right, realistically? Um, I'll try and read some more comments. I don't try not to kill me internet at the same time as I do, though. Um, Liam says, morning, mate. Hope you're all good. Feel good. I'm not going to feel good in about five hours, though. I'm going to feel very bad in about five hours. I just hope, All I'm trying to do is finish it, right? Um, 
the fun dance is the SAS selection march, right? I am clearly not in SAS selection shape. So I just want to finish this. If I can finish this close to SAS selection time, I'll be happy because I'm not carrying weight. Uh, and I haven't been fragged for the last four weeks either. So I just want to be able to finish this. Um, for those who don't know what it is, it's a 22 kilometer march with climbing one mountain twice in the middle. Or it's actually at the beginning and the end of it. It kind of a bit taper off and then back again. But you climb a mountain twice, a thousand meter mountain, um, and it's about 22k. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, Dan says it'd be good for him to get some time with Bellingham uh, greatness with greatness good point Theo says hi Steve uh, we should look at Vermeeren at Belgium perfect next to Kobe there's a lot of players that I think would work alongside him in all honesty Jay says it's frightening that Southgate is being linked with United I would it would ruin us um, Knight says the reaction on Twitter sounds like we need Ten Hag to turn it around after the Southgate news yeah, so it might be. Uh, it probably is still thinking. It probably is me reading far too much into it. But there could be something in this. Now, there is other news I'm going to talk about as well, actually. So, um, Radcliffe has done a podcast with Geraint, Geraint Thomas Cycling Club. Probably butchered that. Sorry. One of the quotes that seems to be making the most noise is when he'd asked, who'd rather win the league out of the title challenges? Uh, and he says, which team do I want to win the Premier League title? I hate them all. They're all the enemy. I couldn't possibly choose. It would be good for Arteta because he's done really well and Arsenal have been patient with him. No, are people clinging on to the fact that him recognising Arsenal have been patient and it's paid off? Does that bode well for Ten Hag? Or again, are, is everyone just clinging on to anything and extrapolating stuff? Um, there's other quotes that came out of it, which there's some really good quotes, actually, and I, I'm all about this. And he says, I'd rather find the next Mbappe than spend a fortune trying to buy success. Um, it's, it's not very clever, is it, buying Mbappe in a way? Uh, anyone could figure that one out. Much more challenging is to find the next Mbappe or Jude Bellingham or the next Roy Keane. Asked if he would like to sign Bellingham. He said, it's not where our focus is. The solution isn't spending a lot of money on a couple of great players. They've done that over the last 10 years. The first thing we need to do is get the right people <clears throat> in the right boxes who are managing and organising the club and make sure we get recruitment right. It's a vital part of running a football club today, finding new players. Do you know how happy it makes me to hear an executive of Manchester United saying, do you know what? We need to get our recruitment right. Rather than you have the likes of Ed Woodward saying, we can do things in the transfer market others can only dream of. Yeah, loads of clubs would dream of wasting a billion, mate. Yeah, you're right, they would. They, they, they probably would. We want... It sounds like he's going, no, 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 no. Let's go and find that talent. Rather than just cherry-picking it. Or even worse, cherry-picking it once it's 30 or 29. Um, I like that. I do like that. Um, and, and then he continues... Um, Asked if that will be Brailsford's job, he says, it's not the only part, but it's a big part of it. It's a collective at the end of the day. Dave is the one who is right in the middle of it all. That's where you start. So obviously Brailsford's building a team. You need to get the organisation structure right. In the days of Alex Ferguson, he was the manager. We don't have managers today. We have a coach and the coach would report to a sporting director and they would report to the chief executive. You need to figure out where to put the recruitment and strategy. You need to get your organisation right and then populate it with people who are best in class. He says, it's not a light switch at United. It's a much longer road to travel, but there's so many aspects of the club and the game that you need to be right. Um, Brailsford's at the heart of the process, but Radcliffe says that his role will not stretch to identifying potential signings. But I don't think that there's any danger of that, to be honest. He says, Dave won't profess to ever say, we need to buy that player because I think he's very good. Dave would never do that. That's not his skill set. We need that skill set at United, though. Um, asked how hands, hands on he'll be he says we talk on a daily basis there's a group of us involved but the two people most focused on it will be Dave and myself we've now got Omar Brada of course who's on gardening leave at the moment but he's become a big part of the trio when he settles in um, he's come from City and will be the chief executive and then obviously we've got those Southgate rumours uh, from Mark Ogden which you've all heard anyway and I don't really want to go back over him um, Theo says uh Weffer, Quinton, Timber, uh, and Graterda are the price of Neves and Silva. Daniel Farr says Jim Radcliffe and Ineos aren't showing their hand in the rebuild and recruitment. It's all about keeping them guessing. 
um, DCPLN says Southgate is just a strategy by Sir Jim to make Ten Hag out as become Ten Hag in. Hey, it's fucking genius if that's what happens. Um, Koala says the fact Jim, Sir Jim is actually talking and we've heard actual words from him, uh, even if it's not AI, oh, all going to be true. It's so refreshing. Uh, he's spoken more in a month than the Glazers have in decades. He's spoken more than they ever have. They, they'd never spoke. They spoke once, and that was after the Super League fiasco. Um, IR says, fun fact, there are more Ajax players in the England squad than the Netherlands squad. <laughs> wow. Um, Amaya says, I'd take Sal Oli a hundred times before even looking at Southgate. I mean, yeah. Uh, CTB says that your house looks nice. No, it's not my house. Um, it's a house I'm staying in um, while I go and do the fan dance today. I'm here today and tomorrow. And then on Thursday, for all the Welshers that are in the chat, um, I'm going watching Wales as they try and qualify for the Euros with Ash. Um, Ash was talking it up, coming doing the fan with us today. But I think he's um, been offered a chance to go on the smash with a lot of his old Wales teammates. So I don't really blame him. Would you like to spend five hours getting fragged up and down a mountain or go on the piss with some of your ex-teammates? It's quite an easy choice, actually, at the end of the day, isn't it? Uh, Hostad says, I'd like, I'd still like us to take an interest in Onana from Everton. Andrew says, do you have the fear that we're wasting Bruno Fernandes, desperate for him to see, succeed at United? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, Scott Keane says, I like your hiking trips. Um, listen, if you're into that sort of stuff or you want to see the sort of stuff that I'm up to or, you know, why I am down here, because it's not just this that I'm down here for, then go and check out House and IRL. There's all sorts on there and doing things like this is to populate that with, with even more content as well. Um, Amaya says, when's House and Verse is going to come out? Um, I don't know. I'm not doing anything with a fan channel this week because I'm in Wales all week. James says, you're going to be chin strap, mate. Good effort. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. It's going to be brutal, for sure. Um, Richard says, it's nice to hear some intelligent comments coming from the club with Sir Jim. Yeah, and, we, and we've only got going really haven't we we've not even really got deep into it where you might expect that we would end up with even more great people that can try and help us uh put these things in place so i think as they do build this recruitment team i just hope people don't try and judge it on this summer window when it'll be a half assed assembled squad and a half assed assembled list you got to give them two three years to really because you can't you can't navigate where you're going to without knowing where you are. And sometimes recognizing where you are isn't as easy as pointing to a place on a map. You have to really understand where you are to understand what improves what you've got. Some of it's very obvious, right? Some of it's very, very obvious. If we lose another center half, or even if we don't, you can probably identify we need a center half. But understanding exactly what you've got and what complements that and what improves that is a little bit harder. You know, I do scout reports and my scout reports, I think they're quite good. They're quite detailed. And usually we look at someone that's maybe a little bit off the radar. We're not necessarily looking at Bellingham's and Mbappe's. We try and find players that I think would, would be good value for United and would add something. But what I can't do, the limits of a YouTuber when doing this is I can't talk to his teammates and ask him what the character of the guy is like. You no, know, I don't know what he trains like. I don't know what his BMI is. I don't know what, you know, the little things that actually make up whether this guy's going to succeed or fail at Manchester United are things that are intangibles to me, but they're not intangibles to the likes of Manchester United. They've got the intelligence and the reach to be able to find out. That's what good recruitment staff do. They don't buy someone because his stats are good. I look at predominantly stats because that's the only data I have access to. When, you, when Manchester United are thinking about investing 70, 80, 90, 100 million pounds into someone, I, I want them to go through their fucking bins and find out every single thing they can about them. I want to know what fucking categories of porn they watch. They should know every single thing about a fucking player before they, before they spend 100 million pounds on finding them. That's the level of detail that United should go to, but also can go to as well. You know... I, I am doing proper surface level analysis, right? Which is still some deeper than some people will ever fucking get to. But the levels that United should be going to when they decide to give this guy 200 grand a week and pay 100 million pounds for him, 
I, I hope they do a lot better than, wow, well, he's got a lot of followers on Instagram, which is something that I think happened in the past at this club. Scott says, consistency and mental skills, please. Yes. Theo says, Brighton did all the, the work for Dan Ashworth. Brighton Scout did all the work for Dan Ashworth. What, I don't know what you mean by that one. Um, any news on Leisha? I've not seen any, now. Ant says, uh, wish this is the case, but some of the fan base are so bloody entitled. Instant gratification. There is a lot of that, yeah. Theo says, Newcastle are getting Paul Mitchell. Is that a fact? That's a problem. Hostad says, do I think Liverpool um, have done well to get the Edwards guy back? He, we were linked to him for a bit uh, when he left, wasn't we? Yes, I think he's decent. Yeah, I think his track record's really good. Um, Superstar says, the character of a player is just as important. Totally, yeah. Like, when you look at this Manchester United squad at the moment, and we sort of spoke about this on the video that I did the other day, but when it comes to, like, genuine character and captains and stuff like that who stands out realistically right for me i think it's it's martinez and that might be it i think onana looks like he's got the potential to grow into a leader but he's got to get his feet under the table first he can't start dishing out schmeichel level bollockings properly until he sees himself whether or not he's in good form at the moment or, or not he has to see himself as owning that shirt. But then you can start dishing out the bollockings. You have to feel like you've earned the right to do that, I think. I think that's important. So I don't think he's necessarily there yet. He might get there next year. But who, I mean, Bruno Fernandes can dish a bollocking out. I think that's fine. I don't think anyone necessarily pulls him up on it. But he still does make daft mistakes on a football pitch. That's not to say the likes of Roy Keane never did or anything like that, but when you when you go back to roll it back to that 2008 squad of ours, right? You had Van der Sar, irreproachable. He can say anything he wants to anyone on the pitch, and no one's got a word to come back to him. Vidic. Now he's a traditional style English football leader, isn't he? Serbian, but he's an English football leader. Like he'll dish a bollocking out and he won't pull any punches whatsoever. Ever the same. Rio doesn't shut up in the game. He commentates his own fucking games. So, and you can, you've can you seen him bollocking everybody on the pitch. Now, 2008, it was Wes Brown playing right back. Wes Brown, by the end of that season, had two Champions League medals. Only Skulls and Giggs could match that, and Skulls doesn't count one of his. So, like, if Wes Brown's talking to you and saying, that's wrong, you're fucking listening. Fact. In midfield, then, you've got Hargreaves, Skulls and Michael Carrick. Out of those, Carrick is the, the quiet one, but he's a guy that doesn't put a foot wrong. And then up front, you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, who no one's talking back to. The guy's the first into training, he's the last out of training, and at the time, he was the best player in the world. And then you've got Wayne Rooney, who is definitely dishing bollockings out, whether he's right or wrong. He's just bollocking everybody. And then the other player in that team was, was rotated. You know, whether it was Tevez, whether it was Park, whether it was whoever. So... When you look at that team and you go, wow, why, why was that team so good? Was it the talent of the players? Yeah, undoubtedly. But it was also the fucking character of those players. The fact that, oh, and you still have Ryan Giggs who we've not talked about, right? And all right, you can talk about different aspects of his character, but clearly he's fucking ruthless <laughs> on a football pitch and maybe elsewhere in his life. Those players, how many of those have won the armband for United? Rooney had... I think Ronaldo had, Giggs had, Skulls had, different quiet leadership, but also very, very high standards. Carrick eventually did, Rio did, Vidic did, Ever did. Don't know if Wes Brown did, Van der Sar did. That's fucking nine players in a team that are captain worthy. You don't have that now. And even when you got the likes of Oli coming out and saying, do you know what? I offered the captaincy to some people and he said no. That just shows you. That just shows you the moral character of some of these, I think. Um, Damon says, so many international captains in that 08 squad. Yep. Um... Omar says, good idea to take him. Hopefully he won't play too much for the friendly and stay fresh. 
Um, Andrew says, mate, Hoyland is by far the best on-pitch bollocking right now. Uh, he's up, He absolutely went for McTominay against Liverpool. Nice, didn't see that. Um, Richard says, mainly has got so much poise for a young player. It'll be exciting to watch his progress. It's almost difficult to to extrapolate. Now do the 94 team. Uh, they all were captains. <laughs> and they were all fucking hard. All right, so let's do the 94 team. So 94, are we still Paul Parker in 94? I think we still, we still are Paul Parker in 94, aren't we? It was not quite Gary Neville just yet. So Schmeichel, captain, Paul Parker, a fucking bulldog of a player, a pit bull, right? Don't think he was ever captain. Uh, Bruce and Pallister. Bruce was the captain. Pallister, he will have won the armband at some point. Also leader. Also incredibly underrated. I was watching some clips yesterday of Gary Pallister against Barcelona. Stepping into midfield and just fucking spraying it around and stuff like that. On oh, By the way, playing on the halfway line. Because Pep obviously only invented that five years ago at Manchester City. Playing 1v1 on the halfway line as a centre-half. No, Gary Palliser doing it uh, 30 years ago. Don't worry about it. Um, left back, Dennis Irwin. Quiet, but captain. Midfield, uh, 94. It's it's Ince and Keane are starting. Uh, both captains. And Brian Robson coming off the bench. The greatest captain that's ever lived. On the right, you've got Andre Kinchelski. It's quiet. Probably not a captain, but a fucking absolute lethal, deadly player. On the left, Ryan Giggs. At the time, Young obviously goes on to be the most appearances in Manchester United history. Up front, Mark Hughes, Eric Cantona, both captains, coming off the bench. McClare, Sharp. Yeah, what a fucking football team. Um, Steve says the Real Madrid are looking... The media are saying Real Madrid are looking at Garnacho. I think he'll be tempted to follow CR7's career path. I think you might be right. However, I think if he if he's sensible and he looks at the the quality that Real Madrid have got, is it, there's going to be some very obvious starters in that Real Madrid team, and there's not going to be a, like you're going to be behind Mbappe, and if you're not behind Mbappe, you're behind Vinicius. I think he'd be dumb if he went. Um, Subic says Angel Gomez should be selected, but you know how Southgate is correct. Um, Richard says I've been blessed to see many great youth progress in our club I think Maynou is one of them you know I think he's going to end up as one of the greats with it um, anyway I'm going to wrap it up here because I've got a mountain to climb um, figuratively and literally but cheers for checking us out as always make sure to subscribe there will be some more content coming out today and tomorrow um, providing that I get off the, the fucking hill alright um, but Take it easy. Have a nice day. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Oh, hang on. Before I go, I've got this. Check this out. Right, we've got another one here for you then. And it's brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Aces Manscaped. This season, it's all about sorting out your carpets and the drapes of the big names in below the waist grooming. Say goodbye to winter fuzz with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0. And watch as your confidence blooms like those April showers, Mayflowers. Step into the season and join 10 million fellas worldwide who put their trust in Manscaped. Dash over to manscaped.com, throw in the code HOUSEHUM for 20% off and nothing on the postage. After getting acquainted with Manscaped, I am all in that spring fever. Let's welcome the season's champion, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. There are two interchangeable heads, one for a standard trim and the new file blade for when you're in the mood for smooth. You've got LED lights, you can take it in the bath so you don't have to worry about um, the cleanup, it'll go in the shower. It looks waterproof. You can go wherever you want with it. And it's also a nice compact case that it comes in. It is the go-to travel companion. And don't forget, spring cleaning isn't just about your balls. It's about the full grooming experience with Manscapes as well. You've got the Beard Hedger Pro Kit and the Handyman Electric Face Shaver. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code Housen. Nothing quite like a little bit of spring cleaning in your kecks. Go get it done. Right, I'm really going now, but take it easy. Make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms.